Hello, my name is Mike Anello, and welcome to another Drupal Easy screencast. Today we're going to be talking about um, adding a local site to a new Git repository, and then pushing those commits up to a remote repository and deploying them on a shared web server. I'm going to be doing this with um, a free account on webenabled.com today. So there's a couple of assumptions if you want to follow along on this. Um, you need to have a web-enabled account, um, and there are free trial accounts available where you can do all of this stuff. You also need to have Git installed and properly configured. Um, you need to have you know, your username and email address configured um, with Git as well. And you need to, need to have an SSH public-private key pair all set up and your public key uploaded to your web-enabled user account. If you have all of that stuff, you should be able to follow along uh, uh, with the screencast. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to take this um, Drupal 7 site, which I just created, and it's pretty basic. It just has a few modules installed and enabled, and I use Devel Generate to generate some content. So we're going to create a repository for this site, um, get it all checked in, push it up to a remote repository, and deploy it on web-enabled servers. So. Our site lives here in our sites. I'm using Uniserver as my AMP stack. So if I dive down a little bit, there's my Drupal 7 site. And here are all my standard files. Opening up our git bash command line window, um, you see we're starting out on our home directory. So we're going to navigate to sites slash Uniserver slash www slash Drupal 7. If we do an ls, we see all of our Drupal files there. And just to make sure it's not already a repository, we can do git status, and it says you're not a repository yet. So our first step is going to be to create a local repository. We're going to do that with git init. And we've, em we've initialized an empty repository. So now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and create our first commit. Now, on Windows, you have to be really careful with carriage um, returns and line feeds. So I like to set another global variable so we don't have any issues here. Um, and again, this is only valid for Windows machines. Git config dash dash global core dot auto crlf to false. Um, so when this is set to false, the um, there's fewer issues with carriage returns and line feeds, I find. So we set that little configuration variable to false, and then we're good to go. We can do git add everything. So we're basically going to add our entire site to our initial commit. And git's going to think about that for a second. And then when that's done, we can go ahead and make our first commit git commit dash m initial commit of our Drupal 7 site. And it's exciting, so we'll use an exclamation point. All right, so when it's done, we can do a git status, and we can see that we're on branch master, which is the default branch, and we have nothing to commit, meaning that Everything's already committed. If we do a git log really quick, we can see that we have only one commit, and it's our initial commit. So we're good to go. We, we now have a local repository on our local site. Uh, I have an image to help illustrate this a little bit. Let me just bring that up. Here we go. So we've basically taken care of this stuff over here. Um, this is our local machine. We have a local web server. We're using the Uniserver. And I've just created a local Git repository. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to set up a bare repository on Web Enabled and then push our local commits up to our bare repository um, via SSH. Okay, so the next step is to come over here and log into our Web Enabled account. Okay, so we're going to log in. And it's thinking about it. And we have a lot of 
sites here, and um, you might not have this many, but the bottom line is you need to start a new site. So in this case, we're going to set up an empty application because we already have our Drupal site here. So we don't need to create another Drupal site. We just need to clone our existing one. So we need a place to clone it into. So we're going to start with an empty app. And for a site name, I'm going to call it DCSPG2 for Git. And this is the second little test one that I'm doing. DC, uh, DC SPG2. I'm going to give it the same name just for convenience. And I'm going to give it a password of better, B E T T E R. And I'm going to delete this right afterwards, so it's not a big deal. So you can see that it kind of spits everything back at you. So we have a shell username and a password, and I'm going to go ahead and create my new site. So remember, all this is doing, this is just kind of creating a shared development site for us. It's going to be completely empty. It's going to be almost completely empty. Web Enabled will put a little logo in there for us to start with, but we're going to get rid of that in a minute. So I'll be right back in a second as soon as the site has been created. Okay, and once the site is ready, you'll get an email, and then you'll be directed to this page where you'll see the URL for your site along with your SSH, SCP, and SFTP login, as well as your MySQL login. Now this information is super, super important. So save this, write this down. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use Sketch to take a screenshot of it, and I'll write it down later on. This way I make sure I have it so I've got a screenshot, and I'm going to put this over here where it's nice and safe. Okay, so what we can do now is we can actually, I'm going to go ahead and right click on this, and we can see our new empty site. And like I said, it only has um, one small HTML file and a logo. So the next step is that we want to go ahead and create our bare repository. And we can do that via web -enabled, the web enabled dashboard. Um, there's a version control tab. So if we come over here, again, I'm going to right click on this, open a new tab so I can always, oops, oh, I went click happy there, sorry about that. Where are we? Okay. So if I right click, open a new tab. It's time to set up version control. So we want to use Git. And now this is very important. By checking this checkbox, it says, allow this website's Unix user to have access to Git without password. What this checkbox effectively does is it creates this link for us so that when we're logged into our shared web server, we can do fetches and pushes without having to enter a password every time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit configure. And this will take only a second. And we now have a repository created. So that step basically just created an empty one of these for us. So if I come back to the overview page, I've got to say I've got it. information saved. This stats block, block is great help because it gives us everything we need. It gives us the SSH command to log in. It gives us our version control information. It gives us our MySQL host and port, which we're going to need in a few minutes. So the next step here is going to be that we want to link up. Where's my image? We want to link up our local repository with our remote repository. And we're going to do that via SSH by using a git remote. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this bit because we're gonna need this information in a minute. So I'm just gonna put that on the clipboard and hit copy. 
So I'm going to come back to git bash, and I'm still, this is still on my local site, and if I do git status, we're still good. So what I need to do is I need to add a new remote. And a git remote is basically a link. It tells the local repository about our remote repository. And it actually creates a little alias so that anytime we want, we can push commits from our local machine via SSH to this repository up here. And the syntax for that is just git remote add origin. And origin is going to be the alias. So that's just the name. And then that other bit that I copied before, I'm going to paste that in. Edit, paste. So this is the address of our remote repository, along with the protocol. So if we do that, we shouldn't get anything back. But if we do git remote-v, it'll show us that, look, we have a fetch and a push protocol set up. So at this point, we're just about there. We can do git push origin master. And what this says is we're telling our local git repository to push all of the commits that it knows about on the master branch to the origin, and the origin being our remote repository. So if we do that, this is the first time we're doing it, so it's going to ask us to confirm that we know what we're doing. Now I have to enter my passphrase for my key, which I'm not going to tell you. And now it's pushing it up. So it's going a little slow, so I will come back in a minute when this is done. OK, and then we're all done. So it's written 100%. If we do a git status locally, we see that everything looks good. Now to confirm that we've pushed commits from our local machine up to our repository, we can actually click on the version control tab and click on this version control browser. This will show you any commits that have been pushed. And I'm going to jump around Internet Explorer a little bit. But you can see that Git now knows about, or our remote repository knows about, our initial commit that we made a few minutes ago and that it was made by me. So we're in good shape. So our remote repository now knows about our latest commit, or our first commit for that matter. So at this point, all that's left is to take care of this stuff. So what we need to do is we're going to clone this repository to our shared server. And in order to do that, we need to SSH from our local machine to the shared server. So the first step in doing that is we come back to the overview. And this stats block tells us exactly what the command is. And again, this is all predicated on the fact that your keys are set up correctly. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come back here. And I'm just going to paste that command in. And it doesn't, this is the first time I'm connecting, so I'm going to just verify that it's me and type in my passphrase. And if you notice, before our prompt was green and it said Michael at Michael PC. And now it says, well, exclamation point, or no, actually web enabled 11, exclamation point, WDCSPG2, which is our username. So this prompt tells me I am now on the remote server. So I've actually logged in to this server through this SSH connection. So and anything I do now, is doing it on this machine. So the first thing I'm going to do is find out where I am. And I'm in my home directory. So web enabled puts things in consistent places. So if you do an ls, you can see what's available to you. And what you have to do on web enabled, you have to go to your public HTML and then go into your site. And it's, it matches the name. So it's, it matches the name that we entered earlier, dcspg2. And if we go in here and look around, we see we have two files, an index.html and a logo.png. These two files are actually what's generating this beautiful page. So we're going to get rid of those, because we don't want this beautiful page. We want our website. So we're going to do an rm index.html, rm logo.png to remove those files. And now our directory is completely empty. 
So now we want to we want to clone this repository via SSH onto this machine. And again, our web-enabled dashboard shows us exactly what we need to do. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Let's see, where is it? There it is. It gives us the entire git clone command. Actually, it gives us almost the entire. We're going to add one tiny thing to it in a second. So I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to come back here and paste that. But I'm also going to add a period, a space period at the end, to basically tell Git to clone this repository into the current location. That way it clones it right into our home directory. And this should go pretty fast. Checking out all the files, and we're done. So now if we do an ls, we're going to see all of our Drupal files. Now remember, these are the Drupal files that started here that we pushed up to our repository, and now we've just cloned them over here. So the files on our shared web server are now identical to these files. So if we come over to our site and hit refresh, we're now going to get an installation page. The reason why it doesn't look exactly like this yet is because we haven't brought the database over. All we brought over is the code. So we're going to go through the process of installing Drupal here, and then we're going to bring over a, co a fresh copy of the database. But there's one step we have to do still. We actually have to create an empty database for Drupal to be installed to. So back on the overview page of Web Enabled, we're going to go to PHP My Admin. And we're going to open up PHP My Admin. And our username and password are right here, MySQL login. So I'm going to copy this, copy, oh, wrong one. Paste, I'm going to get rid of the extra space just in case. And then our password is better, B-E-T-T-E-R. I could probably remember that, but I'm going to copy it anyway. You should definitely make a stronger password. Mine's pretty weak because I know I'm going to be deleting this site in a few minutes and paste. So log in to there. And then this couldn't be any easier because we can create a new database right from here. DCSP G2. And I'm going to give it the same name as my site just to keep everything consistent. Default values are fine. Hit create. And there we go. Database has been created. So now we're basically done with this window. We can close that and we can come back to our installation and we can continue. So we're going to do a standard installation, English. Database name we just created, DCSP G2. Database username is right, all the same information again. So I'm going to copy this one again. Password is better, I'm going to type that one in this time, just because I can. Paste. B-E-T-T-E-R. Now, for web-enabled, their shared, ser shared server, you do need to fill in the advanced options, at least the host and the port. So if we come back to our overview, all this information is in that stats block. The host is this, and the port is this. So I'm going to copy the port, and I'm going to know the host is 127.0.0.1. So the host is 127.0.0.1, and the port I can paste. And now I can save and continue. And I'll be back. Well, maybe this will go quickly. But a stock install of Drupal 7 is now taking place. And we have to fill out this stuff. Drupal easy at gmail.com. This is where you set your user ID one account. I'm going to turn this off for now and hit save and continue. All right, it's installed. 
Now again, it doesn't look exactly the same as our local site because we haven't copied the database over yet. But all of the code is the same. So the next step is to copy the database over. In order to copy the database over, we need the backup and migrate module. And if we look, you see I don't have it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. And I'm going to assume everyone knows how to do this, so I'll pause really quick and come back when I'm ready to install it. OK, so I've downloaded the Backup and Migrate module and just put it in my local Sites All Modules directory. So if I come back here to my Modules page on my local site, oh, i got to spell it right. You can see I have it here. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that here. Now we need it on both our local site as well as our remote site. So what better way of getting it from one place to the other than to use Git? So we're going to come back here, and I'm going to, I'm still uh, logged into my shared server, so I'm going to exit out. So now I'm back in my local server. And if I do a Git status, it tells me, oh, backup and migrate is untracked. So I'm going to Git. Add sites, all modules, backup and migrate. Git commit, added backup and migrate module. And then git push origin master. And again, I've just created a commit that contains this module, and I'm going to push it up to our repository with this one command. And this will take a second, and it's done. So now I have backup and migrate on my local machine. It's in the repository, but I need to fetch it down to my shared development server. So I'm going to log back into the shared development server. I'm going to CD back to the same place. And I'm going to do a git fetch origin. And what git fetch origin does is it says, hey, origin, give me any commit objects that I don't have yet. And it looks like some stuff was there. So once I fetch it, I need to apply it. So I'm going to do, I, I like to use rebase. So I'm going to basically tell git, hey, git, if there's any commits from origin on the master branch, rebase them to the current branch, which is master. And we've done that. So that looks good. So now if I go to my remote site over here and go to modules, I now have backup and migrate over here, which is fantastic. So I'm just going to enable that one. So now I have, I have backup and migrate on both ends, so I'm ready to go. So I'm going to come back to my local. OK, so I'm on localhost. This is my, the site that resides on this actual machine. I'm going to go to Configuration, System, Backup and Migrate. I'm going to make a backup copy of this database because I want to use this database on my remote site. So I'm going to back it up. Oh, and actually, I've, on Windows, I forgot to do one thing. Depending on what software you have installed, the safest bet when you're on Windows is to change the compression to zip. Unless you know that you have, that your machine can handle gzip, it's probably a safe bet just to change it to zip. Everything else you can leave default and then do backup. If you're on a Mac or a Linux box, you don't have to go through this extra step. And I want to save this, and it says it's downloaded. So I can close this. So now I'm going to go to my remote site, which is over here. And I'm going to go to Configuration. So you see that we're on our web-enabled site. Backup and Migrate. And I'm going to take the database we just used, and I'm going to restore it. 
So I'm going to browse my hard drive. I believe it's going to be in downloads. And there it is. It's a mysql.zip file. I'm going to open it, and I'm going to say restore now. Now, you should always be careful whenever you're restoring. Make sure you're restoring to the right server, and because when you do this, you're going to overwrite whatever is currently on this machine. So on this server, you know, it's basically a fresh Drupal 7 database with nothing in it, so I'm fine with overriding it. But always, always, always make sure you have a backup and make sure you are restoring to the proper server because you can lose data forever. Forever. I don't know why I can't highlight that, but it cannot be undone. So be careful. So I'm going to go ahead and click restore. And it's going. And it says that it looks like it's done. And if I go back home, you'll see that we now have the story from our local site. So again, here is our local site right here. And here is our remote site. So the content is the same, and you can see on both sites, I now have the admin menu enabled as well. So the only thing we don't have yet is the images. And the reason why we don't have images is because the images aren't stored in code, and they're not stored in the database. They're stored in the files directory. So if we, to, if we want to upload the images to the shared development server, we still have one more step to go. So let's go ahead and finish this up completely. So the way to do this is via, let's see if I can find the right page. You'll notice that this login information is valid for SCP and SFTP login. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use WinSCP, which is sort of like FileZilla or any other file transfer program. Um, and in this case, my host name is DCSP2 or dcspg2.dev4.web enabled enabled.net. The username is right here, w underscore dcspg2. I'm going to leave the password blank because I want to connect using my private key again. So it's, it's easier. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to point to my private key which is going to be this one in this case. Hit open. And now if I log in, again, it has to say, are you sure you know what we're doing? Are you sure you're connecting to the right place? So I'm going to say yes. Type in my passphrase, which I'm not going to tell you. So now we're looking at, on the left, we're looking at our local machine. And on the right, we're looking at our remote machine. So over here, if I go to, I want to navigate to, let's see, my documents, my goal, sites, uniserver, dub, dub, dub. So inside the Drupal 7 site, the directory we're concerned with is sites, default, files. So inside here are all of our images. Here's all the images. So what we're going to do is we're just going to basically copy our entire files directory to the appropriate place on our shared server. And the appropriate place is inside public HTML, name of our site, and again, sites, default. And there's a files directory in here, but we're going to overwrite that because we don't care what's in there right now. So we're going to just drag this and put it over there. And we're going to say transfer new and updated files only. This is probably a safe bet. And I'm going to hit copy. That's going to go ahead and do that. Now, this is not the way I normally do this. I normally do this using um, Drush rsync. Um, that's a little more advanced topic. It's kind of out of scope for this screencast. But there's a lot of different ways to keep your files directories in sync. So I encourage you to look into those on Drupal.org and other places. But once this is done copying, we can come back to our remote machine where we didn't have images before. And if we hit refresh, we have our images. And we are done. So as a quick review, what have we done? We had a local site set up on a local machine. 
we created a new Git repository using Git init and committed the entire site to this local repository. We then created a web-enabled Git repository that we're able to use Git push origin master up to this repository. Then we created an empty site on our web-enabled shared web server, and we used our git clone command to clone this repository. And then the last step was basically to install an empty site here, and then use backup and migrate to copy our database from our local machine to our shared server, and then use a standard SCP or SFTP program to copy our files directory over. So at this point, our code, our database, and our files are completely in sync. And our task is done. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.